for so long and then ordinary time. Well, actually, so today is the great solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity. All of our readings today were ways in which we reveal the fullness of who God is. And it was more clearly clearly revealed by Jesus himself because Jesus is the fullness of God's revelation. So he is the one who reveals to us that we can have a relationship with God. That God isn't just a floating figure in the sky. He's not just a cloud. He's not just a burning bush. He's a person. But he's not just one person. He's three persons, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we proclaim this at at every Sunday Mass. We've got the creed. Well, even before the creed, we've got the gloria. When we're not in Advent or Lenten season, the gloria, we, we proclaim Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. At the creed, we proclaim our belief in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But what does it really mean to believe, to live out a life of believing in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? If I believe that God is a a loving and merciful father, like the Bible says, and especially throughout the Old Testament. When you really read the Old Testament, God constantly reminds his fallen people that he is a merciful God, a loving God. He's constantly calling his fallen people, his sinful people, back to him. He wouldn't do that if he wasn't a merciful and loving God. So if I'm going to live in this belief that God is a loving and merciful father, then I am going to love everyone whom God created, which is everyone. God created everybody. And I'm going to respect everything he created, which is every natural thing. So he didn't create the internet. He he didn't create... He didn't create the things that we manufacture, but we have to take from the things that he created and then we manufacture our own little things. But we need to do so in a, in a respectful way. We need to respect everything, which includes the animals, except for the mosquitoes. I don't, I don't think we have to... Can you, what, what do you think Jesus did to mosquitoes? No, you don't get my blood. Get out of here. <laughs> my blood is for my people. Pretty sure he was faster than Karate Kid. You hear that? Uh-uh. Otherwise, we, we respect every other thing that God has created. But because when it comes to loving others, we know, we know that we are fallen. Everyone else around me is fallen. Uh, therefore, if I live out my belief in God, who is a loving and merciful father, then I must be merciful as well. I must be forgiving of others. And then I can go regularly to confession and receive God's forgiveness. And I also need to forgive myself. If God is willing to forgive me, I need to be willing to forgive myself. So I forgive others, I let God forgive me, and I forgive myself. And I love everyone, and I respect everything. If I believe that Jesus is God the Son who has taught us, who has revealed to us how to be in right relationship with God the Father through prayer and who sacrificed himself for our salvation, then I will stop living a selfish life. If I'm going to live this belief of who God the Son is, and that we were created in the image and likeness of God, then I must stop living a selfish life. And how did Jesus teach us how to be other-centered? He told us to pray, give alms, and fast. 
And so I'm going to be entering into a conversation with God the Father on a regular basis. And I'm going to be open and honest with him. I'm not just going to say a bunch of words. I'm going to say that which is actually meaningful because that's what a relationship is. Relationships are meaningful. So I'm going to enter into meaningful, intentional prayer with God on a regular basis. I'm going to fast and I'm going to give alms. I'm not going to be gluttonous. I'm going to not be selfish. I'm going to work on regularly practicing saying no to my selfishness. Not just during Lent. Lent is when all the cultural Catholics help all the serious Catholics remember, oh, we're not alone. We pray, we fast, and we give alms all the time. I don't just hoard. I'm giving alms. I'm going to give to people who can't, who don't have a resource for, their, for themselves, no way to, to help themselves in certain areas. If I can help them in that area, I will. If, if God never changes, and I'm going to live in a belief of this never-changing God, then I'm always going to be in this habit of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So believing in Jesus is living in a relationship with God through those three things. Honest prayer and selfless living, but also in sharing the faith. What did Jesus say in the gospel today? As his followers came up to him, this is the very end of Matthew, right before he ascends into heaven, they worshipped him. They recognized he is God. But they doubted. There was some level of doubt. They didn't say exactly what he was doubt what they were all doubting in. Maybe they all had different levels of doubt and different aspects of, of that doubt. How good it is that we at St. Gerald's have what the Archdiocese calls a clear path and what St. Gerald's calls the way of discipleship. To help people feel comfortable right where they're at, but also feel encouraged in their faith, I mean, right where they're at in their faith, whatever doubts they might have, but also feel encouraged that there's a way of discipleship. I can grow in my faith. I can, I can gain more confidence in how I live my belief. And Jesus says, go, make disciples. How are we going to do that if we don't share the faith? Disciples are those who are disciplining their lives to follow God, whom Jesus reveals to us we can be in relationship with because he is three persons, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if I believe in the Holy Spirit, whom Jesus called the advocate, the friend, then I will be a friend to others. I will receive God's friendship and I will bestow that friendship on others. I will stop being influenced by the secular culture around me. And I will instead be a positive influence to others by living out the gifts that this advocate, the Holy Spirit, has given me at my baptism and has increased in me at my confirmation. Understanding, knowledge, wisdom, fear of the Lord, also known as awe and wonder, in God's presence. Piety, counsel, and fortitude. The seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. When we live that out, we then get to see the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now, all of a sudden, I start seeing these 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit in my life. I start experiencing love, joy, peace, patience, Kindness, goodness, chastity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and generosity. Those are all supernatural. 
but they're natural to the gifts of the Holy Spirit because the gifts of the Holy Spirit are supernatural to us. When we live out the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we get to experience the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And all of this, because I'm docile to the Holy Spirit, I'm receptive to what he wants to do in my life. Because when Jesus, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said, I will send the advocate to you. God will be with you. And so I must be docile to what God wants to give me. So believing in the Holy Spirit means that I get to experience his power when I live in this belief. The power to change lives, the power of conversion. That's the Holy Spirit flowing through us as we share the goodness of God with others. We tell God's story to others. And sometimes God's story, well, always, God's story is also a part of our story because we're living it. How has God formed you, changed you, saved you, helped you? Have you seen miracles in your life? Tell others. Believing in the Holy Spirit means I am a confident friend to others, proclaiming and living the truth and praying over them that they would be receptive to God's truth and his love and his plan for them, his friendship for them. What a great day to live this faith. What a great day to welcome someone new into this faith. What a great day for a baptism. This is exactly what we're going to baptize this child into, is this faith. But right before we do that, let's just take a moment to ask God to reveal to us, maybe you already experiencing it while I was talking, in the things that I just shared, what, what are your areas of weakness? that the Holy Spirit wants to strengthen you to better live out your faith. Loving, respect, mercy, forgiveness, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, living, being docile to the Holy Spirit, receiving the gifts, living out the gifts, experiencing the fruits, sharing the faith. Come Holy Spirit, reveal to us how you want to strengthen our faith and help us to live it.